I'm Hazel, it's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week there was a popular rumor making the rounds of a leaked release date. This is the screenshot in question, I cannot speak to its credibility, but it is putting the WoW pre-patch on October the 25th and the launch of Dragonflight on November the 28th. I have no idea whether or not this is true, but I will say that it sounds reasonable. Of all of the dates that it could be, that's like early enough that it's not directly on top of Christmas, although the raid release would probably still be kind of in around that danger zone. But it's also not so early that it's like unbelievable. I do also like the idea of a month long pre-patch, especially considering that we are getting a new class that will take a lot of getting used to, and it may take some people that entire month just to customize their Drakthir, so more time would be welcome. I wouldn't go booking time off work just yet, this is not confirmed by any means, and I feel like even if it was a genuine leak and this really was an internal document, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually when the game's going to come out, because if they didn't have enough confidence to announce it, then there's every likelihood that the development is still fluid enough for that to move around depending on needs. So we'll see, but that does sound promising, right? This week in Live WoW saw the launch of the new connected auction house for commodities, the region-wide commodities thing. I took Tuesday off, uh, just away from the computer altogether. I didn't even try to play WoW, and looking back on it, that seems like that was probably the right call. Sounds like things were pretty delightfully broken. Now, a few days in with some add-on updates and some time for things to kind of settle down, it seems like it is more functional, not perfect, but better. And my first impression is that it feels really fast and fun to sell things. You can be posting things manually and you're selling things basically as quickly as you can get them up. I will say that buying is also a lot easier for niche things. If you had something weird that you wanted to buy that's just never on your realm, um, it's much easier to get a hold of those now. However, uh, prices have for sure crashed. This is something a lot of people saw coming. I was kind of skeptical, but prices are definitely down for most major things. I think, and I know nothing, that the cause of the price crash is one part the actual connection and kind of the wider supply balanced with the new demand, one part panic because of change, and then one part just that we're in the end of Shadowlands. So especially when we're talking about crashing Shadowlands materials and Shadowlands crafted goods, we're kind of in the end of the last days where these materials and these crafted goods are going to be relevant and valuable for their own sake, outside of just like niche time walking in Mage Tower you know, applications. So it's normal for prices to crash on materials at the end of an expansion as everybody kind of like tries to dump out their reagent banks while there's still time. And I think that maybe the connecting auction house and the ensuing panic just kind of accelerated that phenomenon. I'm interested to see how profitable things feel to craft in Dragonflight, especially when there's more quality levels involved. You're going to have different qualities of goods depending on how good the crafter was and how much skill they had and what kind of specialization they had. So we may not see the same kind of widespread mass supply of all of the major things, but we also might because, you know, the region is big and there's a lot of people and it's probably going to be a whole bunch of people that specialize in any given particular way. So uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But so far it feels exciting and I'm sure it must be a quality of life boost for most average players that are playing on like low pop realms that are just trying to put together a kit of stuff to take to like Mythic Plus Knight or Raid Knight. In Dragonflight Alpha this week, we got Monk Talent Trees, and then they opened up level 60 through 70. So you can now, on Alpha, take a character level 60 all the way to 70, and then they made level 70 pre-mades available as well, so you can kind of poke around at max level. Uh, the first thing that I noticed when poking around on a level 70 pre-made is that the world quests, at least on this build of Alpha, they last a whole week, all of them. All of them were on the same timer, and the timer for all of those was a whole entire week, basically until reset. Um, that could be just an alpha thing, that could be like a weird development quirk or an alpha bug, so I wouldn't get too excited and or angry about that just yet. But that could be a change, like maybe they're just doing one batch of world quests and then when you're done for the week, you're done. Um, that I think would be a big relief for people that have felt obligated to do every world quest, and then other people like me that just kind of dip in and out of world quests on an as-needed basis may... I don't know, <laughs> make your own opinion. I did not initially see anything that looked drastically like a calling or an emissary, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. I might just not have looked in the right place. I didn't definitely didn't dig around super deeply. But the other thing I noticed about those world quests is that their rewards for all of them were these sort of dragon flight supplies. And the only thing that I found so far to use them on was this little talent tree that lets you pick either a cool bird or a bear puppy pet, like a Bacar to use out in the world. 
Um, I believe there's going to be a lot more things to do with them than just that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be, you know, on every world quest. Um, I've heard, and not confirmed, but I've heard that you're able to kind of donate them to the Dragonflight factions to earn reputation and thus renown. So it's kind of like an outdoor progression sort of situation, like maybe earning cosmetics with those. Um, I am hopeful and feeling a vibe that the world quests are going to be a bit optional for people that are just trying to go hard on like Mythic Plus or raiding or PvP or whatever. They don't seem like they're essential to a primary gearing power path, but instead they're more important to people trying to collect cosmetics or get some of the slightly more basic gear that might be available from the Renown tracks. That is not a solid journalistic finding, that's really just a vibe, but from the outset that's what it's looking like so far. Speaking of outdoor gear in Dragonflight, in this build we have discovered outdoor gear in Dragonflight. There's this thing called Primalist Invasions at max level, where you can go find Primalist mobs in a given invasion. It lasts for two hours, then it goes away for six hours, then another one pops up somewhere else. And you are able to grind mobs in those invasions in order to get currencies that you can use to buy gear. So this is the starter currency. You can grind that pretty much infinitely. There's no time gating or anything, and that can get you a starter set of gear that you can grind basically at your leisure. And then there's a more time gated set from this currency that you can supposedly get four tokens from per week. And that set is going to sit just barely below normal raid item levels. So that's going to be a pretty solid path of gearing for outdoor only and solo players, but it's probably not going to compete with normal raid too much because I imagine that time gating is going to put its acquisition after the raid. It's a very Sandworn Relic kind of situation, and I think it's nice to have a solid outdoor gearing path for kind of those solo players that don't really want to raid but still want to work on their gear. I do know that we're all kind of sick of new currencies, so some people may be rolling their eyes at two new currencies just for this one thing, but keep in mind that these let you target the pieces that you need upgrades for most badly first. So like you don't have to, if it was just getting random pieces of gear from mobs, then you could potentially get duplicates or you could be getting pieces of gear you don't need. Whereas with this, you can get your currency and then spend it on whatever pieces you want most first. Other news this week, Blizzard has confirmed that boosting advertisements that are posted outside of the new service trade chat uh, will be considered and actioned as spam. So they are enforcing that new chat channel and trying to keep the boosting advertisements within that. That's very good. And... I feel like there was something else aside from just like class updates. They've been doing a lot of work and a lot of iteration and tuning on different class trees on alpha. So they're definitely chugging away at that as time goes on. And I think that's important because that's the one thing that most people I feel like are most worried about not feeling ready. You know, like if there's like a buggy mob or a quest that doesn't work, that's something they can fix and it's kind of whatever. But like if your class feels bad when Dragonflight comes out, you know, bad being very subjective, but like if something functionally doesn't work or feels like a big bummer in your class, then that's something that's going to, you're going to feel it everywhere because you're always playing your class, I guess, unless you're riding your dragon. So I think it's good that they're putting this much effort into just kind of iterating on the class trees and trying to iron out the major pain points. And it's not like that work is going to end permanently once Dragonflight comes out, but having all of the classes and all the specs ship in a pretty reasonable state feels like a good goal and at least it looks like they're working on that. In my life this week I have been getting out and doing a little bit of freshwater trout and bass fishing in some lakes around here locally. Uh, that has been getting me outside and I have managed to catch myself a dinner or two which was kind of exciting. I also found that fishing was way more exercise than I thought it would be. I don't know why I thought it wasn't exercise. I had this idea of people sitting in chairs drinking beers and my experience has been a lot more carrying a lot of gear and then hiking. <laughs> so that's been fun. And then my other project of the worm bin has also been going well. I'm having a wonderful time finding out which different food items I can feed my worms that they will devour the most quickly. Um, they seem to really like coffee grinds or maybe coffee grinds are just kind of the same texture and color as dirt. So maybe they're just blending in, but I think that the worms are just in there all hopped up on the caffeine. <laughs> Uh, questions for this week. Thomas Lab wants to know, I was wondering, has Blizzard planned on developing new covenant abilities that are specific for the evoker class, perhaps new conduits, considering a potentially long pre-patch with evokers? So yes, already on alpha evokers have covenant powers, they have Torghast powers. I'm not sure about conduits and legendaries, but they are definitely making efforts out there to make evokers feel usable in the final weeks of Shadowlands. A surprising amount of effort if you ask me. I think that that's like an evidence point that maybe indicates a potentially longer pre-patch is the fact that they bothered to make Torghast powers for evokers because who's going to make an evoker and do Torghast? Somebody. And, and they can. <laughs> and then X wants to know, since the auction house is now account-wide, can I just mail items to other characters? 
So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you mean mailing items cross realm. Uh, and technically a little bit, you could send gold or an item cross realm with the new connected auction house, but you would need to use a third party like a friend because you cannot buy your own auctions. And it's risky because any outside interference could intercept your plan, like somebody could match your price. So I wouldn't recommend it, and you definitely cannot directly mail things cross realm unless they are account bound items. So you can send things like packages of currency, like if you're mailing Cosmic Flux or not, you can do that across realm because it's just account bound, but regular stuff, not so much. However, it is worth noting, you can of course mail items to other characters in the same realm and you can mail cross faction in case you missed that. Since they uh, linked up the factions and let us do dungeons and stuff with each other, you can mail items to cross faction characters on the same realm, including to your own alts. So I am a largely alliance player, but I've been using a goblin bank alt because she's fancy. And then KMR wants to know, what is your best WoW memory? I remember leveling my first night elf while working on my thesis project. I fell in love with Darnassus while writing about Islamic Spain. So I thought back because I've been playing a fairly long time. I started in 2009, so I've been, it's been a little bit. And the thing that comes to mind as being like the most exciting triumphant moment, we're probably winning arena matches with my friends at the end of Warlords. I had a big PvP phase and there were some very high highs and some very low lows that went with that. Um, and then the other memory that came to mind in just, I don't know if it was like a best one, but just an old one is back when I was like 19, so like freshly legal drinking age in the province where I live, um, I would go out for a night and then I would become inebriated because I was new and had no tolerance. And then I would come home and I remember logging on to WoW and then flying around to my druid picking herbs while waiting to become sober enough to go to bed. And then I would wake up in the next morning with a hangover, but also like a bag full of herbs that I could sell or like craft with. It was, it was a nice consolation prize. What a strange thing to remember. That was a long time ago now. <laughs> And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have a question for a news video, please pop it in the comments, include the word question to help me find it. Um, some of you think I'm very, very powerful. I should clarify. I don't work for a blizzard and I don't know anything that can't be found in Wowhead. Um, and also I don't, I don't have like Ian's phone number to text him stuff. And if I did, I wouldn't use it because I don't, I don't text anybody. I barely text my mother and she, I probably should. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.